The most expensive tickets at a show are at the front row, but we often really don't put much thought or time or effort into really making sure that our front fills sound great. And what is critical to making sure that they are covering right and sounding great is how many do you need and how far do you place them from each other. And you can calculate that easily with my Audio Math Survival spreadsheet. You got that here at the link below or at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. You just need to, know, need to know three inputs and I'll tell you exactly how to space them, where the coverage is going to expire in your audience, AKA ones that are gonna hand, hand off to your mains, and then the total width of the coverage. I've learned this from Bob McCarthy in his book, and then also some fine tuning of the trigonometry and how it all works from Michael Lawrence. So we're gonna walk through the theory how it works, why it works, why you should set it up all today in today's video. I'm Michael Curtis. I'm here to help you get great results out of your sound system. So let's jump right in. Before we start spacing our speakers, let's define the specific role of a front fill speaker. So here on a show, I have a mains hang that's shown in that green box. It's a 12 boxes of RCF HDL's HDL6A that was covering the majority of the audience. And then I have front fills in the yellow box sitting on top of subs that are just covering the first few rows. You can further see their areas of custody. The main hangs were coming wider than this zone, but we're just looking at this specific set of chairs. But the front fills were covering the first two rows in that yellow box. So that's what I wanted it to do. So zooming in back here, this front fill speaker is on the front of the stage and is filling in coverage that the mains is not. So again, it's a subdivide and conquer approach, something you've probably heard me say a million times on the channel, but I'm subdividing the audience into these specific zones and then having each speaker type take care of and feather together into uniform coverage. So front fills are one of many tools that help us do that. So by gathering some data about the speaker, AKA knowing how far is it throwing and the coverage angle of this speaker, I can, can determine exactly how wide of coverage it has even on a flat surface. Because we'll talk about it in a little bit, speakers have a fan shape to their coverage, but we're often projecting onto flat surfaces. And I can calculate that here in my audio mass survival spreadsheet. Again, you can get that at the link below. All I gotta put in is my speaker coverage angle, how far it's throwing to the first row, and the number of speakers, and it's gonna tell me how wide to space them, and then also the max distance of coverage, and that as a rule of thumb, that is twice its throw distance. So if the speaker's throwing uh, from the very front of the speaker to the first row is 10 feet, I know it's gonna cover 20 feet deep if it has line of sight to, to that audience. It does you no know, good, the speakers within the stage two feet high and throwing at people's knees. But anyway, um, and the reason being for that is that's when I have three sources combining at once at that depth. And that's when that coverage is going to expire in Bob McCarthy's language. And then the listening playing length is the total amount of distance I'm able to cover. So if I know the width of my audience and I know I need to have front fills covering the entire front first two rows, I can now determine and here's what I got in the truck. Here's how far it's throwing. Here's how many I got. Can it cover that? And we can gather by that by getting the specs from the manufacturer, the horizontal coverage angle. And so this is a 100 degree box, the RCF HD L6A. That's what I actually had in the air. But it's going to have a nice wide coverage pattern here versus if I turn it on its side and use the vertical coverage, it's going to be nice and narrow. So just to just if you're unfamiliar with speaker coverage, that's what it's talking about. It's talking about it in degrees and width of coverage or in vertical coverage as well. So the actual formula that's been derived here is from Bob McCarthy in his book um, and it's lateral aspect ratio. So lateral aspect ratio tells us how wide of a coverage we have from a given distance across a straight line. So when a speaker's coverage and throw distance from the speaker are known, we can calculate how wide the coverage is at that given distance with the minus 6 dB being the edges, all right? So if we look at an 80 degree speaker, we see its coverage where it's around this, this red arrow is in a fan shape. It's, it's not this flat triangle. Even though this is an 80 degree speaker, if we made a triangle, it would be a straight line connecting these other two points right here but it's not straight across, it's in a fan. So that does something a little bit different. We're trying to calculate how they're going to work together in a straight line. So since speakers have a natural fan shape, but most of our audience is on a flat surface, AKA the floor, 
we need to ask how wide is my coverage when the fan is projecting onto a flat surface? And that's the question that lateral aspect ratio answers for us. So let's look at this example again. So this is an 80 degree speaker throwing 34 feet. I wanna know how wide is it covering across this flat straight line? And so that's where we have lateral aspect ratio. And the formula for that is two times sine of the, the angle of the speaker, that's that little theta sign, divided by two. So there is a fantastic article by Michael Lawrence called Deriving 606's Lateral Aspect Ratio. And 606 is Bob McCarthy's nickname. And he walks you through all the trigonometry on how that's derived. And I'll go through it very quickly here, is that a speaker's coverage angle if we have this distance of the speaker thrown to our point A, if we go off axis the same distance, this is the 6 dB edge. And so he, uh, the color map here, we have this green color and it's a 3 dB color to the lighter green and then another full 3 dB is the edge of the blue. So now we are down 6 dB if we move from the same distance here from A now over to B. That's my 6 dB drop, which is how speaker manufacturers measure their coverage angles here. So I don't know for sure, but this looks like a 60 degree box to me, maybe a 70. So if we scroll down, we can see here that some people, if you're throwing a or have thought, if throwing across a flat surface, you think, well, I can just take this full angle out and go straight up from here, and that's how why it's going to be covering. But the thing is, where those 6 dB edges, this is an increased distance from here, and we're also losing energy off the side due to axial loss. So in a speaker in the high frequencies as loud as straight on, if we move off axis from that, we're losing high frequencies. So if we are both farther away by having to go this amount and ax losing energy axially, we're actually more than 6 dB off. So what lateral aspect ratio does is figure out the effective coverage of a given speaker at a distance and accounts for that with some trig um, and it basically adjusts the width to be the true width, which is this W figure down here. So anyway, please check out this article. I really respect Michael Lawrence. He's fantastic at this stuff and has really explained it well. I want to get too bogged down on the trick, so let's talk about how it's going to help us on our shows. So we're lining up speakers. You notice that, like, well, how many speakers do you have? We talk about the placement, but why does that work? I want to go back to our understanding of decibels. We've talked about negative 6 dB being the edges of coverage with 0 dB being the center, and we rotate off axis, and that's negative 6 dB. Well, what if we add two things that are 6 dB down that are the same thing? What do we get? It's not negative 12. We're back to zero. So 6 dB is also a doubling. If I increase something by six, it's a doubling. So if we take two things and basically add them together, we're back at zero. So that's how we get an even coverage across all these speakers being cascaded against each other. We're basically joining their edges to each other and make, creating a perfect spacing where we can get a great even line of coverage across. So let's look at two different scenarios to see this at work. So here's scenario number one. We've gone a 20 foot deep by 50 foot, 55 foot wide stage. We have a hundred foot deep by 65 foot wide audience. Sorry, a little typo there. And we, it is 10 feet from the downstage edge uh, of the stage to the audience. So that's our throw distance. If we put our front fill speakers on the edge of the stage and you have eight Meyer X40s on the truck, how many do you actually need to get this? And then how far do you space them apart? So let's plug some numbers in. So I have a 110 degree wide speaker is the X40. The unity distance, the first throw is 10 feet. And let's try it with four speakers. I just started with one, two, three, four, and worked all the way up to eight. And I found that four, if I look down here at listening plane length is just over 65 feet. So that's all I need. And I need to put them at a spacing of 16.38 feet. And then I would need my mains system to start picking up at 20 feet uh, because that's when my coverage would expire, assuming that my front fills are up over the audience a little bit to get that deep. All right, so to reiterate, I've got 16.38 uh, foot spacing between each of these yellow figures for each of my speakers. And let's look at the coverage. And it's very, very even across the front. It's 3 dB for color change. And so here, within my first 10 feet, 
we have these 6 dB drop off and from the lateral aspect of this, it's really, really even. So this is great. And this is looking at 4K specifically. Let's do another scenario. So number two is the exact same stage, the exact same audience and dimensions. We're still throwing 10 feet, but now I have eight Meyer JM1Ps and these are only 60 degrees wide versus 110. So we're losing a lot of coverage. Let's plug that into the formula and see how many we need. So we have a 60 degree speaker, unity distance is 10 feet. And we, let's try six of them. And that gets to our listing plane length of 60 feet. My stage is only 55 feet wide. And so this is the most number I could go. So I could either add one more speaker and over cover, or I could be five feet under basically the outside two and a half feet uh, aren't quite within that my 60 B range. And I'm okay with that. So let's see what that looks like for this tour stop. So it's 10 feet between each of these speakers. Now I have six of them across the front of the stage and let's see if we have coverage just as even. Again, we are in luck. It's nice and even here within the first 10 feet of coverage left to right. And we only have a 6 dB drop off uh, total and then our mains will pick up here from here on back. All right, there you have it. That's front fills, how far you should place them from each other, how to calculate that. Again, make sure and get my audio mass survival spreadsheet at the link below. It'll help you do this in the field quickly or do it on design on the front end. I'm Michael Curtis, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.